I got a real good feeling about this morning. Like, you see the, the shade of the mountains and the sun is slowly rising, the fog is clearing. I feel this is a shark morning. A Greenland shark morning. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to try to catch a 2,000 pound fish from a kayak? Well, mate, I'm gonna be stupid enough to try and show you. My name is Joel Abrahamson and I'm gonna try to break the world record for the biggest fish ever caught from a kayak. The biggest fish to ever have been caught from a kayak was a salmon shark that Alan Bushnell caught outside of Alaska in 2007. That was a 500 pound fish and what I'm attempting now is to break that record and release the fish alive. What we've done here today is that we've been dropping rocks and blocks of cement to the bottom and I've been winding them up with my, with my fishing rod that I'm going to use for the Greenland shark fishing. I've been trying to mimic the fishing situation that I'll hopefully find myself in within a couple of weeks here. Once I've actually got the fish up, 100 meters, that's when they'll stop being rather easy to get up. Then I'll, hopefully I won't have to keep pumping like I do with this rock. I'll just put the rod in, into a fully loaded position where it's fully bent and I'll put it in low gear and I'll just gr sort of grind it up like this. To be honest, Scary is the feeling that I'm after. I'm not here to, to feel confident. I want to feel scared and nauseous. I, wanna, I want to experience what it is to have shaking legs and, and be not confident. If I was to feel confident in, in that kind of a situation, then what would be the kick of it? Greenland sharks are scavengers. They are not active hunters. In, inside the stomachs of, of the, the sharks, they found everything from polar bears to moose. They found seals, of course, and basically anything that dies and rots and falls to the bottom. A Greenland shark grows extremely slowly. It's a cold water species, so scientists have come to the conclusion that in most cases they grow about one centimeter a year. So a fully grown Greenland shark is about 200 years old. They live in depths of over, in excess of 500 meters or in, in feet that would be oh, 1600 feet more or less. I'm gonna fish an area of the island of Andorja in the north uh, Norway and the thing here is that the kind of Greenland shark fishing that exists there is unheard of before. No one has ever experienced this kind of fishing before. Statistically they catch one Greenland shark in two days fishing which is must be some kind of a record. <laughs> Daddy's going fishing, Daddy's going fishing, Daddy's going fishing for a shark. Da vet han för att jag går på en plats och föder fiska och så får de inte fästa en dag. Så får de en annan gång på samma plats och fiska dagen efter och så får de inte fästa. Så... Ted is the guy who can drive a motorbike, a three-wheel motorbike on two wheels and at the same time smoke a cigarette and drink a beer. 
Ted, he's just a cool guy coming along. Är det för mycket där? Nej. Det där är... Det, det, det är bra. Alltså det är... Du måste nog ha så pass. Det, det, du vill nog uppleva att den kan dra ut. You got Toreivind, who's the sort of Greenland shark expert. He knows more than pretty much any scientist in the world. And uh, he knows everything there is to, no, uh, to know about catching these creatures. Ja, nej, jag heter nog Toreivind och är... Min far driver Under Adventures um, och det är väl ett familjesällskap där man är med och hjälpes till och därför har man ju kommit in i detta. Utanför öen så är det ju en uh, lite unik med att vi har ganska djupt, alltså det är 500 meter och, och det är inte alla platser, det är många platser här de har det men uh, det är som per, på en måte lite perfekt för Håkäring, det är in i en fjord, det är inte uppe i det stora öppna havet där du kanske får dåligare värld och vi har större möjligheter. Varför det är så mycket hårkärring det är jag lite osäker på, men det har ju inte varit driven kommersiellt fiske på, på hårkärring på en stund. I initially got into kayak fishing because I had grown tired of of all the like boats had gone bigger, sonars, the echo sounders had become more technical. You could see fish out the sides, you could see fish down below you, you could see pretty much anything. And personally, I had started losing the the sensation of adventure in my fishing. So I borrowed a kayak and rediscovered fishing as an adventure. And from that, it sprouted a, a, a thought in my mind that I might actually have a shot at one of the biggest fish ever to have been caught from a kayak. All right, so now I'm finally sitting here outside of the Andoria Adventure fishing camp. I've just paddled out. It's a very short distance as you can probably see. We're about a less than half a mile off land and I've just dropped my first bait in search of the biggest fish ever caught from a kayak. What surprised me the most was how deep it actually was. And I was looking at the spool going I'm hoping that I put enough line on, but I know there's a, there's a thousand meters of line there, so it should be right. But I'm fishing here, I think it's around 500, 509 meters deep. And somewhere down there in the, in the deep waters, there are giant fish swimming around. So I had them hooked. Something, was just something going wrong that made me lose them. All right, I'm gonna set the hook on this one. Right, I'm gonna start winding. I'm gonna need to pop, pop it into low gear on this one. Jag missade den, vad är det som är fel? Jag får inte hem 
as we were about to reel in, realizing that we're losing light, you know, we're not going to be able to handle such a big fish in, in the dark, I just had the, a few nods on the rod tip. One, two, let's go. I lost it. I don't know if you can imagine, but if there's only 15 fish over a thousand pound being caught all over Norway in one year. If you then hook three Greenland sharks in one day and you lose them all, that feeling of what you've just lost is devastating. The wire is all tangled up from its rolling and the bait fish that we strap on with plastic strips has been eaten clean off the hook. The thing for tomorrow is that we've got, we got the best weather conditions until about four o'clock in the afternoon. So after that, there's gonna be too much wind to even fish. And those bad conditions are gonna stay with us for the rest of the week. So I've got tomorrow to catch that world record. If we can get the anchor straight, and we're out there in the right time, I, I feel positive that, that, that I'll have another hookup. And if I get that hookup, I'm not gonna lose it. We had only been fishing for like two hours and I saw something on the rod tip. I saw just a slight movement. Jeddo. It's amazing because like you're fishing it, it's 500 meters deep, that's over 1600 feet. But the, the take is so cautious. You're not that. And then as, as you're slowly, slowly drifting, line starts ticking out. And I just kept reeling, 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 because it's a circle hook, so it's gonna come out of its mouth, catch a hole on the corner of its mouth, and just hook itself. The initial thought was, have I taken water over my head? Am I in too deep for this? Immediately, it stripped line off the spool, and that was really scary from the from the kayak. I had to like grab a hold of the handle and just lean back and let the fighting harness take the pressure. All right, have hooked up. This one is properly hooked.
This is too heavy. Yes! Honestly, I'm, I wasn't sure if it was possible to, to actually get it up. But once you feel that resistance and you're in that sleigh ride, as, as we call it, the kayak anglers, like the adrenaline takes over and it's just pure animal thoughts. It's you and that fish and you gotta get it up. It is pretty heavy. It's taking line on me sometimes too. I've got the drag set ah, as tight as I can. This is not comfortable fishing from a kayak. Well, I'm not here to be comfortable. I'm here to get scared. And I am scared! This is what it's all about! The sleigh ride! I was thinking I would be able to keep the rod off the kayak while fighting the fish, but I'm not. I'm just gonna let it be. Rest against the kayak. It's either that or I'll break my fucking leg my back. I gotta rest against the fish sometimes. Bara närma sig ut va? I'm getting exhausted, it's very tiring. The last 10 meters was when I started feeling that I'm, I'm actually gonna get this fish up. But before that, it was just too heavy. That is the biggest creature I've ever seen. When I saw that fish just about to surface, I was thinking that I'm gonna need new underwear because that was so big. It's an ancient fish, it's 200 years old. It's a fish I've been dreaming of seeing for my entire life. And just having that fish like surfacing just below my kayak was just nerve wracking. But once I got it up to the surface and I saw its big mouth opening, I just started screaming and I oh, almost started crying and I just felt like emptiness inside. I got, ah, oh, it's just, some sort of a religious moment, of, I guess. They measured the fish to 401 centimeters long and 202 centimeters in girth, which is calculated by the scientists to 566 kilograms.
Fan vad ont gör i handen Jag har lovat every second av det Tack Serious fisherman, you know Blanda ångest med rädsla och total glädje så kommer man ganska nära. Svensk pilk is about to hit the stores. Du skrämmer mig. På riktigt alltså.